Sonic. You know who he is. Sonic the Hedgehog. More action, more speed. Sega Genesis, it's a whole lot more for less. Sega's mascot, known for his inconsistent franchise quality. Now, as a degenerate Sonic fan I am, I could give you a full lecture on the series. But, I bet money you've heard this story a million times by every shitty, mediocre YouTuber like myself. So, let's cut to the chase and play the first two games in the series. It's Super Sonic. Super Speed. Bust the video game speed barrier wide open with Sonic the Hedgehog. Blaze by in a blur using the Super Sonic Spin Attack. Super Attitude. Sonic has an attitude that just won't quit. He's flippin' funny, yet tough as nails as he fights to free his friends from evil. So just wait. Sonic may be the world's next superhero. Sounds like a good time. Released in 1991 and developed by Sega CS3, now known as Sonic Team, this game was an amazing showing of speed for its time. The Genesis could show higher speeds in the Super Nintendo and Sonic brought it to its limit. We start off in Green Hill Zone, an iconic and amazing starting level. It mainly exists to let you run free and get away with not paying too much attention. It's here to teach you how to get around and get your reflexes ready for the future. You can collect rings and shields here. As long as you have at least one ring, you can take any hit and survive. Shield will protect you from one hit and allow you to keep any of the rings you got. This way of protecting yourself goes hand in hand with the focus on speed. Like in real life, if you're going too fast and you fall over, you just have to get up, pick up what you dropped, and keep going. And hey, as long as you got one ring, you can keep at it. As long as you don't fall into a pit. Every zone in this game is three acts long and ends with a boss battle against the evil Dr. Eggman, or Robotnik if you're American. After getting through Green Hill, you enter Marble Hill Zone. This level is a lot bigger and a spike in difficulty. There's lava all over and jumps have to be precise. While it's not the end of the world when you hit lava because it only takes a rings, it's still a big jump in difficulty that could have been handled much better. But hey, on the bright side, the zone rewards exploration with rings and lives, which is a plus. When you finish Marble Hill, you arrive at the much easier Spring Yard Zone. Now this would have been a much better second zone. It has a lot less pits to fall into and encourages slowing down with simple walls and spikes instead of just throwing you into lava. The only difficulty here is the annoying roller enemies that copy your roll move and are hard to kill. The boss here is pretty cool too. Robotic will try and stab you with a spike, and if he misses, he'll destroy part of the floor. Which, while leaving him open to attack, means you have to be more careful. After Spring Yard Zone comes the Labyrinth Zone, an underwater level. Oh god. And here the game takes everything it did right and throws it out the goddamn window. Most of these levels are in water, and instead of letting you go through the level quickly, the game forces you to slow to a walk and wait for air bubbles to not drown, look for hidden switches that are impossible to find, and wait for water levels to rise. It's by far the worst zone in the game. It's so god fucking cramped, like, Jesus Christ, I can't go five seconds without getting hit. Of all the zones in this game, I spent the most time here. It doesn't even look that pretty, it's just boring browns and dark beiges, like, jeez. It doesn't even end with a boss, you just chase Robotnik for a little bit, and then there's just a lot of water for you to drown. I hate this. But hey, to make up for it, the game gives you the best zone right after this one. Oh, this place is so incredible. Just stellar music. Soothing music. It returns a sense of speed Labyrinth Zone just got rid of and puts a smile right back on your face. It looks beautiful compared to the previous zones. And th through the stage you're introduced to these seesaws to get to higher places, it ends up being more important to the boss here. You use a seesaw to launch up and buttfuck robotic smithereens. It's short, it's simple, and by God is it incredible. Now on to Scrap Brain Zone, the final zone, and... Well, that was bullshit. After that, you find a level that isn't afraid to show its dark side. There are gears to ride and tricky platforms to stay on, but you'll get through with persistence. And at the end of Act 2, there's even a cutscene. That's cool. 
A lot of games usually wouldn't have these here. Why would they reuse the worst zone in the game? It's, ju it's just more Labyrinth Zone. Why? We already moved past it on the greener pastures. Why would you bring it back? After the nightmare? I, I, I don't understand. Why? Why? <laughs> After that nightmare, we move on to the final battle. No rings, no shields, one hit and you're dead. Eggman tries to squish and electrocute you, but all you have to do is dodge and hit. Not too hard, but a fun battle to end off on. And that's the first Sonic game. Oh, yeah, I I forgot about the Chaos Emeralds. If you finish any of the first or second acts of a zone with at least 50 rings, you'll enter a special stage. There are normal gold spears to go after, but tell those to go fuck off and find one of the Chaos Emeralds. Collect all six, yes, six in this game, and gain something amazing. The incredible, amazing, superfluous additions to the ending that make no difference. What did you expect? Here it is, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, with Sonic's friend Tails. Developed mainly by Sega's American Technical Institute team, with some help from Sonic Team, Sonic 2 looked to expand upon the original in every way to show Nintendo who was boss. There was a lot of hype for this game. Smear commercials, Nickelodeon showcases, even released on a day dub, Sonic Tuesday. The controls here are basically the same as Sonic 1, but now you have the Spin Dash, which lets you gain speed while standing still. You can also choose to have Tails follow behind you and help. He doesn't do much, and most players find him annoying and more of a detriment than a help. But I would argue otherwise. Tails can help you land an extra hit on bosses and kill enemies. I say he's useful 60% of the time, useless 35% of the time, and a pain the last 5%. Starting off in Emerald Hill Zone, here we have a basic clone of Green Hill. It's quick and easy to get through, which is okay. That was beginners to learn the ropes and veterans to get through easily. Also, only two stages per zone this time, with a boss at the end of the second. Chemical Plant Zone. Now here's where the game stomps its predecessor. It's a unique idea of a chemical factory that has rising water levels as you go through. It teaches you water physics with an easy platform challenge instead of just throwing you right into it. Much better than Marvel Hill Zone. Speaking of water, next up is Aquatic Ruin Zone, a water level. Unlike Labyrinth Zone, this time the game has prepared you, and you're also able to avoid the water for a large chunks of the level. Plus, you're not cramped up in tight quarters. And the boss is pretty fun. Hop on the arrows it fires, and get a boost to hurt him. Now, Casino Night Zone. Pinball, gambling, lots of rings, little rings, it's fun as hell. Go fast, go slow, go at your own pace, pinball the fuck out of the world. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! And that's really what I could say about the next three zones. Platforming challenges that are challenging, but not bullshit. Cool locations and music to jam to. And lots of tries to get the Chaos Emeralds. Oh yeah, forgot those again. Bring some rings to a checkpoint and hop right into the special stage. These aren't as good as the ones from the first one, as the draw distance is terrible when they try to go for this whole 3D perspective on a console that could only really do 2D. All you have to do is grab enough rings to get to the next stage. And that's easier said than done. Also, don't expect Tails to help much here. He loses his rings very easily. Get all seven and you unlock Super Sonic, a plagiarized idea from Dragon Ball that allows you to speed past all your enemies as an invincible beast of a fucking hedgehog. After a few zones, you'll end up in Sky Chase Zone. A cool level where you ride on a plane. And that's it. You can jump and kill enemies, and there really isn't much to say outside of a pretty cool breather level. Because right after it is the hardest level in the game, every single missed jump will kill you. This is a major test of your abilities. I honestly struggled here a lot, but I wouldn't say it was unfair. Plus the moments where you have to hang on to the side of the flying ship are pretty intense. And after that, you enter the Death Egg Zone. No rings again. And this time you have two bosses to fight. Enter in a battle with the firstborn Sonic robot, Silver Sonic. He's a pain to fight with his consistent moving and precise hitbox. If you hit his quills even by a pixel, that's one life gone. But with persistence, you'll find yourself against the Death Egg robot. A sexy beast of a machine that will put you to work. Take him down, and finally, peace is restored to the world. And that... are the first two main series Sonic games. 
They hold up very well with minor hiccups and are honestly must place for any degenerate like myself. Heck, you don't even need a Genesis to play them. You can play them on Sega Saturn, Sega Nomad, Dreamcast, GameCube, Wii, Game Boy, DS, 3DS, Switch, PC, Mac, Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS2, PS3, and or PS4. And probably many more by the time you watch this video in a million years. Um, I don't know how to end the video. Yeah, I'll look at that eventually.